Hi, hi folks. <laughs> Probably a little bit slightly out of balance here. Um, welcome to the Wannabe Gardener. Right, this is part two of getting rid of the monstrosity. Um, I forgot last time, obviously I don't have an exterior microphone yet. I will be getting one, so the sound quality will improve. Um, but yeah, we got kind of halfway through this yesterday. Um, now it's uh, try and get through a little bit more. I think it's going to take a little bit longer than I thought. I planned to get out earlier today, but hey-ho, it didn't work out. This is my uh, piece of exercise for the day because it is obviously the coronavirus crisis. And, um, you know, there's incredibly sad stuff going on at the moment, but just trying to keep the spirits up in the light of things that are happening and trying to get outside for a bit of exercise. Anyway, let's crack on with it. So I did put my tools here on the ground so I could find them. Didn't find the gloves again. And actually realized I did get more cuts and scrapes than I realized yesterday. So, oh, and I've got to remember, each time I turn away, the sound gets worse. Anyway, so I'm going to crack on. I'm going to try and start leveling away a bit of this section here. And maybe actually get to the base of it and actually use the saw. We little tenon saw, because I can't find the other one. Obviously, can't find anything at the moment. Um, and try and cut it off from there and save myself a whole lot of work. Okay. Let's get going. Actually, I should, maybe, I don't know. Can you actually see this side? Probably not. So I'll adjust it, hopefully without making a fall. There we go. <laughs> the problem is there's no there's no really big branches. There are all these tiny, tiny little uh, branches, so that's why it's taking so much longer. And I'm burying the saw, so let me not do that. As I said, that's why I call myself the wannabe gardener, because it's all a bit new to me. Certainly the outdoor exploits. I'm going to try my best not to rip myself to shreds as well as time. But I probably will again. It is actually, I think it's even bigger than I thought it was. This plant, whatever it is, the ugly plant. Just, it, it just seems more and more, each time I cut it, there just seems more of it, <laughs> not less. But uh, I guess it's just patience. I don't know what you think, but I think it's a awful thing it's just awful it's just, I don't know it, it, it just doesn't seem to have any redeeming features if a plant can have redeeming features but you know what I mean it's just it's a big it's a bunch of tangles but I guess I suppose well I know I would say fairly confident in saying that's because it hasn't been pruned back or anything like that for years and years and years I mean I don't know. It looks like, honestly, it looks like it hasn't been pruned in about two decades or longer. Anyway, if anybody knows what the name of this plant is, please let me know. So I don't know if I can do a bit of research tonight, I think. But just, as you can see on the inside, when we're getting into the inside, look, it's just, it's kind of like, I don't know. Some of it has got the thickness of hay. Hence the reason why it's going to take probably part two, part three, part four, part five. It also doesn't help the fact that uh, I probably got about an hour of sleep last night, so. So. How would you, if you were doing it, yeah? How would you, as an experienced gardener, 
if there are experienced gardeners out there, I'm sure there are many. Um, how would you tackle this? You know, so if I'm doing this in future, or certainly with one of the other bushes or trees, if I'm doing it, what's the best way? I can see logic to that one and that one, but hopefully maybe I'll never have one of these again. But it would be nice to know if there is a, an easier way. So I assume by getting to the getting to the base of it would help, but it's very difficult to get to the base when you've got like this. It's just it's impenetrable at the moment anyway. What I did notice, for those of you who do like this plant for some bizarre reason, um, is that it looks like I'm killing it, but I don't actually think it's going to die because down here I found like new shoots and stuff like that. <laughs> so I'm going to make sure when I finally do get it completely taken away, or uh, well, you know, cut away, cleared, removed, um, then I'm going to, well, I, I need to dig out the area uh, because this is the area, approximately the area I'm going to put the pond in. Start building a pond, digging, etc. Anyway, you've probably seen enough of me struggling with this for the minute. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to pause the video now. I'm going to hop around, pause the video, and uh, get back to you in a bit when I've made some more progress. Actually, I've just got to turn it back on again. It's just me. I uh, just want to show you here. It's actually growing right over the back of the neighbor's garden. <laughs> so, you know, it looked like I was halfway through yesterday, but uh, I think that's serious wishful thinking at the moment. It's nowhere near. And obviously it goes over here as well. Not so bad over here. Whoops, sorry about that. It got caught in some of the debris. Not so bad over here, but it's still quite a substantial beast. But anyway, put this back. Hope you enjoyed the trip around the bush. <laughs> the ugly bush. And uh, I'll get back to you when I make some more progress. I'm back again for a teeny bit. Now this may seem painfully, painfully obvious to some of you out there. Um, but I noticed there, and this is what it is, it's about a learning process as I go along. So instead of being the wannabe gardener, eventually I'll be a gardener. Or the gardener. Um, yeah, I noticed what I was doing initially, and yesterday, and even today when I started off, was I was just hacking away and fashioning randomly, doing it like this, and then pulling and tearing, and, you know, pot luck to see if I can get bits out. But what I did there, you'll see, I cut off... A lot, I don't really can see it, obviously, but a lot of just separate little branches. And actually, I've made far, far better progress doing that. I know, again, as I say, I know it might be ridiculously obvious to some, but I've just started to cut them off, and I've already cleared this section, so I've learned something today. Cool. Okay, later. <laughs> well, I'm back again. Um, I think you'll agree. So I've definitely made some, uh, some progress here, so I'm very happy about that. A few things to report. Um, this is the tree, or whatever it is, next to it. Um, I cut a couple of the branches off because they were just mashed in between this monstrosity here and that one there. Uh, so I cut a couple of them off and then I was looking, I was like, what is this tree? I recognise the bark on it. It's like this paper bark. Uh, then I found this. And to me, with my limited botanical knowledge, uh, that looks like a fuchsia, I think. Um, so if you know what that is, please let me know. I think it's a fuchsia. And I checked the leaves, these leaves are bigger but those leaves are smaller, um, but they are the same leaf with a, a spiky edge to it, but a soft spiky edge. It's not like, they're not like they wouldn't, uh, they wouldn't damage you in any way. So I think it's future, but I've definitely seen that flower, that hanging little bud before. So anyway, that's that. That's the first thing. Oops, there's my cat going to the video, just for usual. 
Um, ah, let me move it so you can see. And I found this. Nothing spectacular. It's some sort of table platform. Is that a riddle? If it is a riddle, the holes are very big, or is it just part of something else, or is it just some weird sort of garden table? I don't know. Anyway, so let me give you a 360 view. I've certainly, I was going to say hacked into it, but I haven't actually hacked into it. I've just done it very methodically. And as I said, my new method, um, which is to uh, just cut off branch by branch by branch. And it certainly allowed me to get into it far more quickly. Now, I've had to stop work. I was going to continue work. I don't really continue. I was going to continue work on it and just kind of try and bash it down and do this in like three, four parts. Uh, but I have a problem. A kind of beautiful problem. Um, but also a sad problem as well. Uh, when I was cutting through it, thankfully I wasn't hacking away like I was yesterday. But when I was um, cutting away delicately at each branch and pulling them away, uh, I uncovered something. Um, I'll show you, but I've left it. I've left it as covered as I can. Where you can let me try and get in here. I don't want to disturb it. But I think if you can see there, it'll be very difficult to see. I don't know if you can. There it is. There hiding in there. It's there, right there. But I've cut, I've kept it covered. Um, now I was very close to it a number of times and that's what worries me, so I'm going to take the camera back. I don't know whether you'll be able to recognise what it is. Um, I'll try and show you over, but I don't want to take anything away from any of the cover away from it. Um, I don't want to necessarily disturb it any more than it already has been. My worry is that I've now disturbed it for the last two days. Um, how it's still there I don't know because my cat kind of lives up there in the shed so it's in kind of prime position for him to kind of jump it's a bird's nest um, and I've seen bird's nests before and stuff I didn't expect one to be in this uh, I just didn't I, I don't know why I kind of expected him to see them in, in trees plenty of time obviously um, so when I was looking at it I went oh wow it's an old bird's nest no it's not an old bird's nest there's actually eggs in it they actually look they look like they're little chocolate Easter eggs. Blue ones, I think possibly. Blue tit, grey tit, I think from the tit family. I'm, uh, I'm not 100% sure, but they're tiny. And I was like, no. Not because I can't take this out, because I don't know whether the, the, the bird um, still lives there. Now I was told when I was a kid that if you disturb a, uh, a nest in any way, shape or form, the mother won't come back. And so that's kind of made me very sad because this whole garden idea is, is about, well, it's about food, growing my own food, but it's also about wildlife. I'm very, very passionate about wildlife, so I'm actually quite a little bit sad about it, to be honest. Um, but, you know, th those are the things sometimes. It certainly wasn't intentional. What I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of stop work now on it. Um, I'm going to keep an eye out all today and see if the mother returns. If the mother returns, I'm going to stop work on it and wait till the eggs hatch and they fledge yes it's going to put me back you know a considerable amount of time as far as the pond is concerned but i can do other things in the meantime or else move the pond um and wait till they fledge and, and fly off that's the ideal world i don't think she's going to come back sadly um, but i will keep a, a, a close vigil i'll even um videotape it to see if she does actually come back and um well touch wood hopefully she does um, but there's been a lot of disturbance, so them are the breaks. Um, my hands ripped to shreds, <laughs> actually quite considerable cuts. And yesterday what I noticed is when I went in and when I washed my hands, as we all have to do these days, lots and lots and lots, um, when you're cutting through stuff like this, if you don't wear gloves, yeah, you get a few scratches and cuts and here and there, but hey, it's part of gardening, isn't it? Um, but <coughs> Also, uh, there's obviously chemicals in the plant and stuff like that, and in the sap. And if it gets, you know, if it gets into the, the cuts, they hurt a lot more. <laughs> but hey, -oh, there we go. Anyway, uh, what have I learned today? Well, what I learned is that this plant is absolutely huge. 
There's the big giant pile of waste that I've got to move. I've learned that wildlife will be where wildlife can be. Um, I've seen a beautiful nest, uh, found this table, and um, yeah, wear gloves. And actually, the, the most important, the gardening thing that I've learned is, you know, patience. Patience is a virtue, you know, the old adage goes. Uh, and it certainly is the case in gardening as well, because I did far, far better work today, I think, uh, trying to remove this than I did yesterday. Um, because I was patient, I did it bit by bit, took it, it only looked like little pieces at a time, but suddenly before I knew it, the, the thing was nearly cleared. Anyway, on that point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the tidying up, um, and I am going to try and film, or try to move away from here and see if the, uh, if the, the, the bird or the, the, the little mummy bird comes back um, to, uh, to take care of our eggs. We'll see. Anyway, I'll keep you updated. In the meantime, this is the, um, the wannabe gardener. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, um, I invite you to subscribe. Uh, this will be video number two only. Um, and yeah, comment. Let me know. Let me know what you think. You know, how I'm doing, what I could do better, etc. If you've got any hints, tips, if you'd like to ask any questions. I know about wildlife, not so much about gardening, obviously. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's been, uh, it's been lovely again. So let me go do the tidying up and um, I'll speak to you in part tr three. Three? <laughs> not three. Part three. <laughs> anyway, take care everybody in the meantime. And, um, you know, I hope everybody's keeping safe because of coronavirus. Yep, take care. And see you next time. Bye.